Hello, we're back in Pleasant View, and uh, today it's time to meet uh, Marissa Bendet and her family. And they live over here, in one of the classic base game Pleasant View houses. <laughs> it's the little blue one, and uh, she's actually employed in the political career, and that is one of the active careers that I want to start up. So, well, it's been a year now. Uh, since it's taken me so long to record this, but I recently created this community lot. You might have seen it in Neighborhood View before. That's the, the Pleasant View Town Hall. So I actually want to go ahead and purchase that for Marissa this episode and see what we can come up with. So this is the house, what it looks like from the outside. So they've got a pretty big garden with a lot of trees and some hydrangea plants. And also, of course, a soccer goal, <laughs> like so many other families in this neighborhood. And then going down to the ground floor, we have the entrance right here. We have a uh, small living room. Going this way is the joint kitchen and dining area, and also uh, Marissa's training equipment in the corner there. Of course, the door going out to the back of the house. And then we have the landing right here. We have a uh, bathroom. We have the master bedroom. And we have their son's bedroom as well. So it's a pretty compact house, really, but they fit in a lot of uh, stuff in here. <laughs> yeah, that was the whole house, so let's move on to the characters. So here is Marissa. She is a fortune sim. And she is a Gemini. Very active, but also pretty grouchy. She actually has uh, a bit of a <laughs> personality similarly to a Scorpio. I think, um, but she's a Gemini. She's extremely fit and uh, fitness is her hobby as well. Hence the training equipment downstairs <laughs> and they want to go jogging, of course. Um, her secondary aspiration is family though. So that's what she wants to focus on. And her lifetime wish is to reach golden anniversary. So she is married to Grayson and they have one son together, so they don't have any extended family uh, except each other so far. But uh, Marissa's family, the Bendets, have always been close with the Tellermans. And growing up, Marissa has been um, almost like a cousin <laughs> to Tosha. Tosha is a little bit younger than her, or quite a lot younger actually. But um, Marissa has been sort of like... Someone that uh, Tosha looked up to as a child. Uh, when she was a child, Marissa was a teenager or a young adult. And Tosha has always aspired to become very much alike Marissa. And Marissa has always uh, taken Tosha a bit under her wing and um, helped her out. And this looks at her a bit like a younger sister. And then except that, uh, she's also pretty close with Dina Landgrab. And then... <laughs> We have Sandy Bruti and also Melissa Fancy, although she's not very high up right now, it looks like. But they are best friends forever. So Marissa grew up in Pleasant View. She was a teenager right here, and this is, was where her family was located. But uh, once it was time for her to attend the university, she moved to Sim City and uh, attended university there and got a good degree. And that was where she met Jason Cormier, or Jason Menon, as he was called back then. And the two of them uh, got together and actually even got engaged during their college years. But then once uh, Marissa had finished up her studies, she moved back to Pleasant View. And uh, that was where I started to play with her. Uh, I had moved her into the same apartment as uh, Melissa Fancy and Sandy Bruti. So those three girls were living in the same apartment as roommates to start off. 
And it took Jason a little time to finish up his studies and then uh, move into Pleasant View as well. Once he finally did, he didn't end up moving in with Marisa. He lived in his own apartment and they did not see a lot of each other really. Uh, Marisa was focusing a lot on her um, work. She had started to work in the political career, of course, uh, meeting Mary Sue Pleasant and uh, starting to crack on with all that that job involved and um, improving a lot of things in Pleasant View. But then Jason, on his side, grew a little bit impatient, I think, and he started to go out with Christy Stratton. And at that time, Marissa and Christy were actually neighbors, so it didn't take long before she found out. And uh, yeah, Jason really ended up breaking her heart. Um, from his point of view, I think that they had grown apart a little bit, what with the move and then not hanging out a lot. But I think that Marissa was definitely counting on him uh, to become her husband and uh, to start a family with him. So she was really up to a rocky start. Marissa has actually has a very, very unlucky time <laughs> when it comes to romance, because after all of that had happened with Jason, she started to try to flirt with Kennedy Cox. And they were pretty close at some point. It looks like they aren't anymore. They, they have a nice relationship, but they are not friends or anything like that. But they used to be pretty close. They were also neighbors at that time. But um, unfortunately, when Marissa started to flirt with him, and I think that she actually went for a kiss at some point, he rejected her and uh, yeah, actually went ahead and um, started seeing Kaylin instead. <laughs> so even though Marissa tried her best to woo Kennedy, that didn't end up working out. So she eventually was surrounded sort of by <laughs> rejected uh, relationships. She had uh, Kennedy on one in one apartment and then Jason in another. She ended up actually moving out from the joint apartment uh, with her friends into this house instead. And um, seeing as she had a pretty good position uh, at work, um, she had quite good funds as well. But sadly, after that point, there was a very long period in her life that she was not seeing anyone at all, that she couldn't find anyone to love, even though she definitely wanted to find someone. She ended up becoming very lonely actually in this house. As you saw, she's a secondary family sim and she definitely wanted to have someone to spend her time with, to start a family with and to have a child with, but she couldn't find anyone uh, for a very long time. Not until she by chance really met Grayson. Now Grayson was, I think, a randomly generated townie, unless he came with Blue Water Village, maybe. But he started to see a lot of uh, Marissa, and uh, finally, once she was uh, like mid age, maybe, they finally ended up getting together. And um, Marissa fell in love with him quite quickly. But sadly, he's not in love with her yet. And quite a long time has gone by. Um, he acts as though he is in love with her, of course. And I think that he definitely looks at her as a life partner. Um, but yeah, of course, Marissa thinks that he loves her and everything like that. And they are married as well. And they have a son together. So from her point of view, everything is pretty much perfect in their relationship. But yeah, from his point of view, things are a little bit different. So right now, um, Marissa has a pretty stable private life and when it comes to her job she is um, pretty much the senior at her job and uh, as I mentioned I want her to become the same in this neighborhood that owns the political um, careers um, building like the town hall and uh, the, the family that we will use to play that community a lot. So in some ways, she is uh, definitely following in uh, Mary Sue Pleasant's footsteps, but I think that uh, her point of view of things is a bit different from her, uh, Mary Sue's. So I'm excited to see what differences we can make in the neighborhood with Marisa. So next we have Grayson. He is also a fortune sim and his hobby is sports. So that's why they have that soccer goal out back. Um, he's also a Gemini and he, I think I actually that they have the exact same personality yeah they do yep <laughs> uh, 
and he's uh, also fit. And then his secondary aspiration is popularity, though. And his lifetime wish is to become chief of staff. He's employed in the medicine career as a resident. So he works nights, really, or, well, evenings, I guess. And, um, yeah, that's why we didn't see him in the hospital episode, because, well, of course, he doesn't work in the day. So this guy is a, a little bit of a trickster, because I've had a hard time to wrap my head around him um, and understand what he wants in life. Um, as I mentioned, he has not fallen in love with Marissa, even after all of these years. Uh, she's a life companion to him, but um, yeah, he's not in love with her. And um, that's pretty interesting. Like, I think that he might have a difficult time to uh, commit to people, like um, open up completely to them. Even though he's definitely come the closest with Marissa. And it actually was so bad at one point that he ended up having a um, an affair with Jennifer Pleasant, his boss. And the two of them went on a few dates and they have actually even woohooed. They've gone as far as that. And um, yeah, it seemed to work out fine for a while. But then at some point when I invited him over to Jennifer's place and uh, tried to have them interact, he started to reject her pretty harshly. Uh, he showed very clearly that he had decided that he did not want to continue on with the affair. Um, and he did not think it was a good idea. It was something that was a little exciting, a little different uh, to him at some point. But in the end, he decided to just be faithful again to his wife and um, to stop seeing Jennifer in that way. And uh, yeah, they, they are not as close as they were once because, yeah, of course, Jennifer was <laughs> a bit uh, annoyed at that. But uh, of course, she accepted it. But yeah, in the end... Grayson actually decided that Marissa was the woman for him. Even if he still doesn't love her, he uh, is very loyal to her. It has turned out. And uh, I think that, um, I mean, he was recently growing up into an elder. And uh, he seems pretty fine with the position he's in at work right now. I think that he's just going to keep working like that and then eventually retire. And then possibly find something else to do with his time. Um, possibly support the local soccer field or something like that since he's so into sports. We'll have to see. Then we have their son, Hugo. And he's definitely a mixture of both of them, but I think that he has uh, quite a lot of his mother in him, especially that nose. And I think he actually looks very handsome. He's very unique looking, but in a good way, I think. And he's, uh, like his parents, also a fortune sim. And he's actually a true Scorpio, though. <laughs> so he's, uh, well, very, very grouchy. But also extremely active. <laughs> and also very outgoing and neat as well. I think that his parents aren't as neat, no. So he's definitely a lot more neat uh, than they are. And he's also fit. Uh, this is a very active family in many ways. And his hobby is also sports, just like his father. So... Those two have played quite a lot of soccer together in the backyard. And um, yeah, of course, he used to attend um, the um, children's soccer club as well as a child. I don't think I've added a secondary aspiration to him, no, but he's maxed out otherwise. And he currently has uh, ambitions to join his father in the medical career. But we'll have to see if that's something that uh, he keeps going with. In general, I think that he's pretty similar to his father and um, he has the potential to become pretty similar to him as an adult as well. But uh, yeah, let's see how he turns out. And um, he actually went on a date with Alba Landgrab recently. They're not uh, in love or even friends really. Uh, but yeah, they had a first date and it went okay, I guess. Uh, but that might be something that would be fun to explore a bit today, if they can go on a second date and see how they get along. But yeah, other than that, he doesn't have that many close relationships, really. Uh, he's uh, the closest with Alba and uh, Jolie Bruti, and a bit close with Hazel Cooper, actually. Um, 
I think they might have played a lot of soccer together. But other than that, he doesn't have that many friends, so I guess that might be something that he needs to work on. And finally, we have the family's dog, and that is Max. He's one of the pre-made puppies that you can adopt. And uh, he's uh, lying out here sleeping on the curb because he is actually employed in the uh, security career as a sno snooper deterrent. So um, he's uh, a current police dog, really. I have some plans for like what's needed uh, for police dogs, as I mentioned in the episode with Ramin Sentowski. But um, yeah, I think it's fine for him to work here right now. Um, and yeah, so he's um, pretty exhausted a lot of the time, but he's uh, a good boy. He um, is a genius, so he's very easy to train. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it suits him pretty well and definitely suits the family to have a dog that works because all of the three of them constantly gets wants for him to progress in his career. So <laughs> I think it's fine for this. All right then. So first things first, the careers tell me that uh, Grayson needs to be at work in the evening, of course, so he is fine for now. I want to uh, get the community lot for Marissa and then we will go with her over there and I will show you what that looks like and what my ideas are for that. And of course, Hugo is going to school as well. So let's just... Um, maybe let's have Grayson make some breakfast for him. Let's just grab some sandwiches then. Um, and then I'm gonna have Marissa check what the community lot costs for one thing and then buy it. All right, so it's going to be Pleasant View Town Hall. Okay, so she would need to have a stipend of 160,000 simoleons. So yeah, so I'm going to have to caching um, mother load two times for to start. Sorry, three times of course, and then caching ten times. And one thing that you can do if you want to do several at once, you can write something that's not a um, sheet, and then it will open up the big bar, and then you can go ahead and just click uh, right in the sheet you want and enter, and then you can just click the upwards key to get it again, and then you can do it quickly several times. And then of course, if you want to have it small again, you can just click X, enter, and it will go down, and then you can just escape out of it. So now she has all her money, so she can go ahead again uh, and uh, buy it. There we go. So she owns the lot, and um, yeah, she needs to go at eight, I guess, would be a good time. So she has one hour before work. So let's just have her walk downstairs and uh, also have Hugo go downstairs and they can have some uh, nice breakfast together. Okay, so she's starting off talking about the Watcher, apparently. I actually don't remember if these guys are faithful or not. I suppose they might be if they, that's the first thing that they start to talk about. Yes, Marissa is faithful. Um, Grayson is agnostic and then Hugo is also agnostic. So it's mainly Marissa actually. Alright, so she's finished up and I'm gonna have her head out then. So this is her car. So let's see. All right, so Marissa is arriving. So this is the lot. And it is next to the hospital. And then we can also see that we have the library there, the high school. And then on the other side, we have land grab industries over there. And then we have the elementary school and the daycare center. <laughs> Right there, so yeah, it's uh, definitely in the middle of things. And this is what it looks like. I made it a domed top, like a little tower up here. I thought that looked a bit like a <laughs> town hall like that. 
So this is uh, what it looks like when you come into it. So it has this uh, great entrance. And then in here we have a uh, courtroom, I think I made this. Um, so my idea for this room was that I would stage some sort of um, court sessions if there was ever a criminal that needed to be sentenced <laughs> to prison time or something like that, or a fee or whatever I could come up with. We have some place to actually do that. I might have to keep this door locked though because I suspect that they might want to use this quite a lot. <laughs> so let's see. And then similarly we also have this and this was uh, my idea of a press room. I don't currently have an active newspaper in town but I have some ideas for that as well of course. So my idea was that I would sort of stage press conferences here if I ever would need to. Or Well that would be a lot of fun I think if I could make up something like that. And then we just have some um, bathrooms here. For men and women they look exactly the same. And then going up at one level, this is actually the floor that I think would be used the most for the people who will be working here in the active career. So this is just a sort of um, hallway I guess. And then we have a lunch room here. So I guess that we will be using the microwave quite a lot. And then we have a uh, workroom. So this would be um, the room where most of the employees in the political career would be working. And then we have this office room, or well, meeting room, I guess. So I made it to look quite old fashioned. <laughs> I think it looks fine. And then we also have this room and this was uh, a room that I thought would be like the um, city planners would be working in here, uh, sort of like parks and rec or something like that. Um, so if I have people in the architect career I would have them in here. Um, I was thinking about adding in Christy Stratton of course but she's uh, going to become the priest uh, tomorrow, so that's not going to work. So I'll have to figure out how to do to this. Um, and then we of course also have the office for the um, political leader, I guess. So this would be Marissa's office. <laughs> and this is not a real flamingo, it's a need freak. I think I added it in just to not forget about it. <laughs> but yeah, we also have a time control clock here, so I'm going to go ahead and slow down the speed at once to 50% the way I like it. And that is the whole building then. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to work with it. But I think, as I mentioned, the first thing I need to do is just lock this for all sims. And the same thing with this, I think. Lock for all sims, yes. Great, and um, I don't want people to just randomly come here and visit unless I tell them to. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this visitor controller in the corner here and yeah, just ban all ages and then just in case ban all NPCs as well. Yeah. We might get some reviewers since this is a business lot but um, I can just ban those people individually <laughs> in that case. Yes, so I'm gonna also show you the spreadsheet if you are one of those people who have downloaded it for yourselves you might have gotten a sneak peek of this um, but otherwise I will run through it so I thought that we would have a judge of some sort I don't really have a sim in mind right now to take that position, but we would need to have one eventually if I'm going to stage any court sessions, of course. Um, then we have the city council members, and that is uh, what Marisa is right now. We, of course, previously had uh, Mary Sue here, so I'm just going to remove her. So we only have Marisa there right now. Then I thought we could have a campaign manager 
uh, a lobbyist, which is uh, Tosha right now. She is a lobbyist, I think. I need to double check that. <laughs> and then we could also have some uh, interns as well. And then I would also have to add the sort of city planners as well, I think. I guess that would be architects, but I can work on that uh, at a later time. So that was my idea for this. So, um, you know what? Uh, I need to go back here and just check what sims do I actually have in the political career. I don't think I have a lot. No, I actually only have... Well, Archie Landgrab is a door-to-door -door polar, so he's not going to be relevant. Uh, then we have Tosha, who is a lobbyist. Exactly. And then, uh, of course, Mary Sue is retired. So we only have those two right now. But then, if we check law instead, who do we have? We actually only have LaShawn Cameron right now. Okay. Yeah, so that's not uh, going to work because she's employed in... Um, at Landgrab Industries, of course. And then, of course, we have the architecture career. And that is, uh, well, we do have Chloe Dreamer. And I think that that might be a good idea, actually, to bring her in. Um, she's an architect's apprentice right now. So I guess that could work for now. Um, but I have to look into if I need to promote her or something like that eventually. Um, but yeah... So let's start with those three for now, and then I'll have to figure out what other sims to use. So it's going to be pretty sparse right now, but it might be good to start that way, to just um, get things going. Yeah, so let's just summon those two. Might not be a good idea to have that in here, then, if that's going to be locked for all sims. Um, I might actually put it in up here instead. And uh, yeah, let's do the same with the sim Vista controller. That's fine, I think. And then... Um, so why don't we start this out with a meeting in here? So let's just have them... Or actually, maybe even in her office. Uh, <laughs> I just want to change model to a bonsai tree and then we can put this on an OMSP. I don't remember why I needed it but yeah maybe keep the hygiene up or something like that. I remember that I had some issues with that in uh, land grab industries so maybe just um, set it to defender mode and then hygiene Oh, I think I need to have all max 100, all min minus 100, and then hygiene, the minimum needs to be like a zero. That would only allow it to be like in the middle, but it wouldn't go down so far that they started to stink. <laughs> I think that's what I'm going for. Um... But other than that, I think it's fine. I don't think I need to, to do anything with that. So let's just keep it as is. And then let's have her sit there. And then uh, let's just have them have a meeting in here. <laughs> so these two are just getting acquainted. They're not very close, so. Right, looks like they're starting to talk about aliens. Um, I think that Pleasant View is possibly getting a little bit of pressure from um, other places that have uh, quite heavily military and uh, science facilities because there are some aliens living here and uh, there are some uh, strange things going on with ab abductions, things like that. And um, I imagine that having, um, well, for the, politician, for the politicians, it uh, might be something that they have to sort of handle and juggle <laughs> every now and then. And uh, of course, it's something that they uh, need to sort of um, work on to try to keep their inhabitants safe. Um, 
because we mean we can't just have people get abducted randomly like it's not uh, safe for people and all with all of these um, male pregnancies that have some uh, really distressing complications often um, I mean male bodies aren't meant to be able to become pregnant and then they will need to have some really extensive surgeries if they are going to give birth so things like that and um, I think there are quite a lot of um, organizations <laughs> that are interested to get to Pleasant View and do some investigations, but it might be up to the politicians to keep them at bay. All right, so they have started to uh, get acquainted and uh, started to discuss some uh, important topics. So I think that I'm going to have um, Chloe draft some stuff here. Um, I guess draft blueprint. I'm gonna have Tosha go in here um, and claim a desk. Yeah, I think maybe this one is good for her. And then for her it would be um, work at home. And I guess, um, yeah, charisma, I guess. That's what one would need for um, the political field mainly I guess so let's go with that and then uh, Marissa yeah I think that the, it would be fun to stage some meetings I guess for her um, it would be nice to have her have a meeting with Kennedy Cox I think um, yeah so let's invite him over there we go so he's just going to sit there and wait while these guys uh, finish up their meeting so they're heading out, and then uh, Marissa is going to go out here and greet him. <laughs> Very informal way to to greet him, I guess. Um, but yes, let's head into her office. So of course it would be good for Marissa to really strengthen the relationships with the big business owners in the town. Uh, people who have a lot of influence over her inhabitants in her town <laughs> and um, Kennedy is of course one of those um, he owns the soccer field and he employs a lot of people and he's going to run a big business with a lot of the visitors when there are games as well and we also have the um, the children's soccer club there as well so even though Kennedy isn't running it he's of course owning that thing and uh, that's actually a um, an initiative from Mary Sue Pleasant from the start to start up those children's clubs to give them some uh, physical activities and promote health and uh, yeah things like that um, so the politicians in town have been really involved with the soccer field from the start and um, and as we've also noticed Kennedy has had a really hard time to draw in the funds needed for that lot to work and uh, I think it only makes sense I got some really great advice from T Addict on uh, his episode and I think it really makes sense that he would get some uh, stipends from the um, the town in order to run that lot like um, that's one of the things that I think uh, I need to fix in order for <laughs> him to actually earn some money from that lot. So I might actually set up some sort of, uh, like he will receive a certain amount of money each day from the, the town hall, really. This is good as well. They are rekindling their friendship. They haven't been close, but now they are starting to become more friendly. So that's good. But we're closing in on lunchtime, so I think that it's actually fine to say goodbye to Kennedy. Great, so they're saying goodbye. Kennedy is uh, leaving. And uh, Marissa is going to have lunch. Looks like uh, Chloe is done with her drafting. <laughs> but uh, Tosha is still working. So let's have lunch, TV dinner. And what are you up to? You are using the bathroom, so that's fine. So I'm going to have Chloe go upstairs as well, once she's done in the bathroom. Yeah. So this is also going well. 
So Tosha is going to bring in some money for the, the lots this way. Okay, great. So Tosha is done and they got a little bit of money from that. So that's good. Looks like Marissa and uh, Chloe are getting along, along quite well, actually. So that's good. A good start to their friendship or their <laughs> work life. Their relationship as co-workers, that is. <laughs> oh no, don't tell me that it's an error again with a microwave. If that's the case, I really need to look into that because uh, we're going to have a fire again. Um, what if I choose delete this time? I guess it will delete the whole microwave, right? Uh, okay. Huh. Yeah, I really need to look into this. Just reset. Okay, I guess delete that as well then. Um, so she couldn't get the memory of that. Um, what's wrong with this? Maybe I just need to buy a new one and sell that then. Let's try this again. <laughs> that was a fun error. Yeah, I need to check the error logs, what they say, uh, why I got that. Hopefully it's nothing bad. <laughs> okay, it looks like Chloe is sick. Yeah, so I think that's quite enough of a lunch break. So uh, I'm going to have Marissa head back to her office. And I think she might actually have another meeting. Uh, I think it would be nice to do the same thing with Malcolm Landgrab. He's also a very influential person in this neighborhood, of course. So let's have her greet him. And then uh, when Tosha is done, she's going to use the bathroom. And then she can write another article actually, work at home and charisma again, I think. And then Chloe, you are done, so you can just clean that up and uh, continue drawing. I guess she might have interrupted herself coughing or something like that, as seems, uh, six seams tend to do. Uh, what? Be shoved? Why? Oh! He doesn't like her. Why? <laughs> Malcolm, why? <laughs> why don't you like Marissa? What did you do? I have no clue. I honestly don't know. I have no idea why. Oh well. <laughs> I guess this meeting is going off to a good start then. Uh, <laughs> let's sit down and not shove each other. Hopefully their relationship will be a bit better after this meeting then. <laughs> That's interesting. Right, so they are starting on their meeting and then uh, Chloe is in here working. Great, she got some creativity. She needs that as well, so that's perfect. Yes, yeah, so I think that one thing that uh, these two are discussing is um, the fact that Malcolm wants to buy quite a lot of um, community lots in the neighborhood. Um, he has uh, a lot of plans for things that he wants to start up. One of those things is, of course, Guppy Jill's Carbos restaurant. And uh, that might be something that they are discussing right now. Malcolm purchasing a community lot like that. Um, and I guess he would need to have a lot of permits to, to start that business, basically. Great, and Tosha is also gaining skills. That's awesome. So she's actually only working until now. So I think I'm going to have her head out. How long are you working, Chloe? To four. And you, you're only working to three, so I guess I'm just going to keep them until three. That's going to be fine. But uh, yeah. Tosha can leave now. I can just make her unselectable, really. Yeah, okay, so things are looking quite a lot better now. At least uh, she's uh, in the positive. <laughs> Although the long-time relationship is uh, quite bad. But yeah, she seems to be pretty fond of him, at least. That's good.
I think that they might also be discussing... Uh, Oh good, I'm getting a notification when um, the drawings are done. That's perfect. Then um, I won't, don't have to supervise her as much. That's perfect. Um, but I was saying that I think they're also discussing um, Malcolm's scholarships for um, young students in the culinary career as well. So that's something that he's um, discussed with John Burb at the high school as well. So that might be something that they're talking about too. Um, yeah, you can just go ahead and draft another one then. I think that's fine. And I think that these guys can just um, finish off their meeting. So let's um, do a handshake with him. That's good. And let's make an unselectable. Perfect. And then, yeah, she's pretty much just finishing up. Um, she can go in here and have a little bit of a chat with Chloe before they leave. Here we can see the need freak is <laughs> doing his magic. That's good. I guess I needed it then. <laughs> okay, and that's actually the time. So let's just make her unselectable and let's have Marissa head back home and then actually go to work. <laughs> so yeah, I think that overall this was a successful attempt. Um, it will be fun to explore what more things we can do with this, and uh, I have some nice ideas as well, so. So we're back at the house. Marissa is returning, and then Hugo is going to go to school now. So let's see if I can have uh, Marissa go to work. Yep, drive to work. What? Who is that? Is that your... It's the driver. What? <laughs> She's not the driver of the school bus was attractive. Oh well. Okay then. Um, he is uh, getting freshened up. So he's pretty outgoing um, and active and all of that. So I don't think that he would be one to just uh, sit at home when he has the, the morning off. Um, so I think that he might head out. Question is where? I guess, uh, well, I guess he would head to the soccer field, really. That makes sense. So let's just change into your everyday outfits. Great. And um, why don't you drive to the woodland soccer field? I think he was interrupted by the dog. Oh no. <laughs> Let's try this again. So he's pulling up and we can see both Kennedy and uh, Adriana Sang arriving to the lot. So that's nice. So let's just have him head out here and uh, play some soccer. You might notice that um, he keeps playing, even though his fun is maxing out. And uh, then it goes down a little bit to about there. And uh, the reason for that is, of course, that I have a need freak on this lot as well. <laughs> so it's actually on uh, flamingo mode on this lot instead. And that's the opposite of defender mode. So defender mode is uh, it won't go down past a certain point. But flamingo mode is the opposite, so it won't go up past a certain point, so he won't be able to max out his fun, so that's why he keeps playing, even though he's, um, yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> okay, looks like he thought he was done now anyway. Um, yeah, I also have um, a cap on energy, looks like. That's interesting, because that was defender mode, though. Do I have two of them on here? Maybe I do. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> But anyway, um, so he feels like he's done. So I'm going to bring down his comfort a little bit and the energy up instead. And then, yeah, he can head into the showers. He might actually even have used the sauna for a bit. That might be nice. Oh, but someone's calling him apparently. So let's see who that is. 
<laughs> okay, a random townie? Nope. I don't think that's a good idea. She's also a teenager, so don't know what that's about. So let's just use the sauna. Yeah, so while he's sitting here, um, let's see what other people we have here. Looks like we don't have any other visitors. I know that I was messing around with the visitor controller at some point, but maybe I overdid it. <laughs> As all ages are allowed. I know that I did something with hobbies. Yeah, only sports and fitness are allowed. Oh, I think that's why. <laughs> I had banned all sim types. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if that fixes it. Yes, so now we have some more people here. That's good. All right, yeah, so he's spent quite a lot of time in the sauna, so let's just have him have a shower. Can have a cold shower now then. He's a little bit hot, so. Okay, nice, so we have this Lothario here. I think he's sports. So it doesn't look like he's actually entering the lot, he's just passing by. Okay. But I think that we had uh, Angela. Here, yes, she's upstairs, getting something to eat, that's nice. Oh, now it's very cold. <laughs> Let's just get out of the cold shower. Um, I'm sure he'll warm up quickly. Um, yeah, so let's just have a chat with Kennedy, I guess. He seems to not have that much to do today. He's just <laughs> hanging out in the parking lot. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, weren't really that many interesting people for him to meet, at least not his age. So I think that uh, I'm just going to have him uh, drive home again. So he's arriving back home. And he's feeling quite well, actually. Um, I might just have him uh, clean up a little bit then. <laughs> Looks like we have some dead plants here. Oh, oops. Looks like we haven't cleaned up after breakfast, actually. So let's start with that instead. So that that's not spoiled. How's the doggo doing? Oh, he needs a bath, actually. So I might go ahead and have Grayson give him a bath first as well. And this definitely needs to be clean. So let's do that too. Guess he's taking advantage of being alone. <laughs> yeah, let's drink some coffee. I mean, he's really so normal, so true to his name, Grayson, that it feels like he's almost like a little bit as if he could be a villain of some sort, <laughs> secretly. <laughs> like he's up to something nefarious and this is some sort of facade. I don't know. It's very mysterious anyway, I feel like. It's very hard to get a good grip on him. It's difficult to understand what he wants. Okay, we got the chance card for Hugo. After the lunchtime break, Hugo and his friends have a few minutes left and start playing a friendly game of tag. Hugo gets tagged pretty quickly and is now it. There are two potential targets nearby. Brian who is one of the fattest kids in school, and Tyler, a not very athletic boy. Should Hugo go for the difficult tag or pick the easy target? He's pretty athletic and pretty social. I think, I mean, he's grouchy, but I don't see, think that he's mean, really. Um, he's ambitious as well. <laughs> So, I guess, chase the slow kid. Hugo decides to go after the easy target and tags him without a problem. Now Tyler has to try and catch someone. Unfortunately, he has a really hard time doing so due to his lack of speed. Hugo watches Tyler get ridiculed by most of his classmates and feels genuinely bad for him. 
Hugo loses some sports enthusiasm. I guess he must have learned his lesson then. <laughs> yeah, that's a good lesson to learn then. So something that uh, Grayson wants is for Hugo to be an overachiever. And I guess that that... Um... Oh, he lost his close friendship with Jennifer. But I guess that makes sense. Um, yeah, I think that she might also want it, even though she doesn't have that want right now. So he doesn't have a, a job after school right now, but I guess he does want to earn some money, so I, we could could do something with that as well. But yeah, I think that uh, Grayson would just uh, keep doing his chores now <laughs> before work. Let's just clean up a bit in the garden. Now what this is going to take forever. Um, let's just do it this way for now. I think we have some out back as well. Yeah. Let's do it like that, and then he can instead focus on the leaf piles, I think. All right, so Hugo is back, and he brought home a um, friend from school. That's some, <laughs> some townie. I think he's from Blue Water Village, actually. But I think that, uh, yeah, he's just going to say goodbye to him. Oh, looks like Max did not like him. <laughs> Oh well. Yeah, okay, so um, let's see what teenage jobs we have today. Um, yeah, part time. Okay, so I mean, law career could work, I guess. File clerk. Yeah, that might be good. I don't I don't think he would go for the journalism one. No, not adventurer. Uh no, not architecture either. No, not law enforcement either. Um so I guess I'll go with law then. Uh, yep, take job. Great, and I'm going to add that into my spreadsheet. All right, it's added. Um Right, so he's going to go to work now. That's good. So why don't you just recycle that and then head out? Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's leaving. And Grayson is making great progress out here. Okay, so Hugo got another chance card. Um. Hugo quickly gathers the files for Mr. Vondersaw's big case. He will be arguing before the Grand Court of Sim City, and his paperwork must all be ready and in perfect order, else he may lose the case. Just before Hugo plans to turn in the files, he realizes that Mr. Vondersaw will only accept his files if they are ordered in a particular way. But how? There's the obvious choice, alphabetical order. But Hugo also seems to remember something about Mr. Vandersaw preferring his files to be ordered by color. How should Hugo organize the files? Hmm. I don't think that he's all that creative, really. I think he would actually go for alphabetical, uh, alphabetical order. Yeah, let's go with that. Mr. Van der Soe's receptionist phones Hugo and demands the files immediately. Hugo is still busy trying to figure out the best way to organize the files, but time is running out and he decides alphabetic <laughs> alphabetization seems to be the simplest, most obvious fit. In his haste, Hugo makes the wrong decision. The receptionist is furious at the improperly organized files, throws them back in Hugo's face and tells him it may be best if he works elsewhere. Hugo is fired. Oh no. <laughs> Poor guy, his first day at work. <laughs> that did not go well. Not well at all. Oh. Okay, so Hugo has returned. And um, of course... Grayson sees that he's back already very quickly, so he's going to um, go here and uh, ask him what's up, why he's back already. And of course now uh, also Marissa has returned. 
She's very tired and uh, also very filthy. Uh, but that's of course because we play the community a lot as well. So I'm gonna pop up the energy for her. But it's fine, I think, for her to have a shower. Okay, where are you running to now? Oh, to answer the phone? No, I don't think so. Okay, so Grayson is asking him why he's home so early. And of course, Hugo is telling him that, uh, well, I was fired. <laughs> and I think that um, Grayson would actually le lecture him on that. Um, I think that from his point of view, he definitely wants him to be um, an overachiever and successful. And um, from his point of view, this is a really bad performance of his son. <laughs> he definitely wants him to do better and uh, to be more careful. Um, this is not the way to start his work life. <laughs> and he needs to try better next time. So I think that he would tell him off, actually, and not be very understanding. So someone's calling Grayson again. And uh, yeah, I guess Hugo would go up to his room. Be pretty annoyed with his dad. <laughs> and he would probably go up here and call a friend, probably. So who would that be? Um, yeah, I think actually he might call Alba. And sort of let her console him. <laughs> yeah, so they're gonna chat for a while. And uh, Marissa is uh, done. Um, so she's done for the day, she doesn't have work anymore, but I was thinking that I would like her to buy something new to wear, because this is a pretty summery outfit, I think, and um, I would like to have her something that suits the weather a bit better. So I'm gonna send her off to the clothing store. And who are you talking to? That teenager again! Can you stop talking to her? <laughs> Where is she even? I don't even see her on here. There she is. Kenya Jones. Don't know why. So annoying. <laughs> okay. So you can go ahead and um, actually keep raking leaves for now. We just have one patch left. Right, so we're at the clothing store. I'm gonna have her walk in here and... Yeah, buy some, something off this rack. Oh, looks like we have Melissa here, actually. That's nice. Yeah, we do. So, um, yeah, I can actually have her greet her once we've bought the clothes. I definitely want her to have some sort of suit jacket, so I'm gonna pick out the pink one for her to start off. Then I think she would also look great in something like this turtleneck. <laughs> I'm gonna buy her that skirt, but then I think that she should also have, yeah, something like that. Yeah, so let's go with that. Perfect. And then I want her to greet Melissa. I constantly mix their names up. <laughs> they sound so similar. All right, let's see if we can rekindle this friendship a bit. Yeah, things are going pretty well. Uh, it was a while since they actually hung out and talked. Um, but I think that uh, seeing as they have such um, long history, it's nice that they can uh, become friends again. They don't really have that much in common, but uh, they of course have the history of living together for one thing, so... <laughs> yep. Melissa has been um, supporting her. Um, in her early years and the first years in Pleasant View, of course, she went through quite a lot of bad things in her romantic life. <laughs> yeah, they still have inside jokes. That's pretty nice. Okay then, um, but yeah, it's getting dark and I think it's time for her to drive home. Marissa is returning. Great. So, I can start this off by having her plan her everyday outfit. Hugo's feeling a little bit better, but he's still uh, very 
downtrodden. I think that he would definitely ask Alba if they could meet up a bit later and um, have a little date. I think that would be nice. So let's see. Yeah, I think I'll go with this for now. Um, looks a little bit more like it's suited for autumn, I think. <laughs> I think that she would uh, read the news. And uh, Hugo is hanging up with Alba and um, is going to get freshened up a bit, I think. He might actually head down to the um, soccer goal to sort of take his mind off things. Um, I think he's a bit annoyed with his father right now, so he doesn't want to play soccer with him. <laughs> uh, and of course, Grayson is going to get ready for work as well. He leaves in half an hour. Um, so, yeah. I'm gonna um, have him use the bathroom, I think. And then he's going to head off. Okay, you finished reading. Um... He's not going to have time to eat. Um, yeah, but you can cook some dinner for you and Hugo. So, serve some, yeah, tomato soup, I guess. <laughs> he wants to get a new job. Mm, poor guy. <laughs> I feel so bad for him. Uh, first day at work and that happens. Right, so Grayson is heading off to work. And Max apparently doesn't have work today, so he doesn't need to worry about that, but it looks like he needs a little bit of social eventually, so... Maybe Marisa can bring him out for a walk. Right, so... Dinner is ready. I'm gonna do my little trick like that, and then have him eat. So of course these guys are also going to have a discussion about what happened um, Hugo's first day at work. And um, I think that uh, Marissa is going to be a lot more understanding than <laughs> Grayson was. She doesn't have the want for him to be an overachiever for one thing, yet at least. And um, I think she's more understanding of uh, it being a journey. It can't be perfect at once, that sort of thing. She's uh, a politician after all, she's used to... <laughs> To be a meddling, I guess, or what to call it. So I think that she's rather like trying to encourage him and give him some advice rather than um, lecture him about it. Yeah, so let's put away the leftovers, clean that up, and then. Yeah. I'm gonna have him um, have a shower. And then send him out for a date with Alba and see how that goes. I'm excited to see how those two get along. I think they look really sweet together. <laughs> okay, that's good. So, looks like he's done. Okay, so where should they have their date? Um... Previously they met in the park, so I think maybe somewhere else. I mean, on 290 Main Street we have this um, little game stop. Um, maybe that would be fun for them to hang out over there. Alright, so Hugo is arriving on the lot and it's time to call uh, Ask on Date. And let's hope she says yes. Nice! So she'll be right over. Great! So I guess he would... Um, do you actually have a um, handheld game? Uh, no, but he has an mp3 player, so I guess he would listen to some music while he waits. <laughs> That's great. Nice, so let's just start this off by chatting a bit. And Hugo can get the chance to complain about <laughs> his first work-life experience. Looks like they're talking about school too, so possibly some um, homework they have or something like that, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but they're friends now. That's perfect, so 
She wants to get the tea cold. Well. Hi, Goopy. <laughs> oh, wow. She wants to make out with him. That's very forward. Nice. Um, but yeah, looks like they want to do a little bit of <laughs> back rubbing. Although Hugo wasn't very happy to do it. Yeah, so let's start with a little hug. He's really complaining a lot. Is it because he's grouchy, probably? Okay, so he's um, having a crush on her. That's nice. And the date is up to good. So that's perfect. Okay, so he has no more wants for this date, apparently. He's uh, pretty happy where it is, <laughs> but she has other ideas. Um, so yeah, let's um, head into the GameStop and then they can play some games together, possibly. Let's just play that and um, I don't know if I can ask her to join. Mm, no. Not yet anyway. Oh, watch, I guess, is the join interaction. <laughs> Hi, Kaylin. Are you also going to watch? <laughs> oh, well. Uh, looks like he lost. Okay. So why don't you just dance together a bit then? There's some music playing in here. All right, so she wants him to flirt with her. Um, sure. Oh no, his face is locked in that <laughs> dancing facial expression. Um, maybe I should uh, reset him. I hope that doesn't do anything with the um, date, but yeah. No, okay, good, good. <laughs> um, yeah, so... I mean, they're on their date, they seem to be getting along quite well. So let's just uh, try for the first kiss and see what happens. Oh, she actually f had a crush on him now? Yeah, great, so things went really well. That's awesome. What are you complaining about now? Oh, he's tired. Okay. Um, so let's just um, keep going with the romantic interactions then. Oh, is she going to play now? Why don't you watch then? Yeah, looks like Alba was better at the game than uh, Hugo was. <laughs> she actually won. All right, yes. Um, so he's uh, complaining about being tired constantly. Um, and it is pretty late. So, yeah. I guess maybe we'll end the date here then. Yeah, and I think um, for two pretty young teenagers, this is fine. Uh, they don't really have to get more advanced than this right now. Um, it makes sense to take it one step at a time. And this way, um, Hugo can actually <laughs> get home in an okay time anyway. Um, so walk home. And of course now he needs to recover some energy when he gets home, but I guess he can take a little nap. Oh. Really? How attractive are we talking? Can I just check that a bit quickly before um, you leave? Because uh, yeah, this is one of the townies that I um, really enjoyed the looks of after I had styled her. Um, I might have to be careful though because she might be an incomplete sim. Uh, I'm not sure how the um, cash register workers, <laughs> how they're set up. And uh, yeah, actually it was just one bolt, so never mind. <laughs> yeah, okay. Michelle, you can stay being a teenager for a while yet. <laughs> yeah, so he's returning home and uh, Max is actually chasing <laughs> Neri Turner, being really aggressive again. Um, normally I would train that away, but seeing as uh, Max is a uh, police dog, 
like a, a guard dog. I guess that's just his nature. <laughs> I mean, those are really, really trained and only do it on command, I guess, though. Hmm, I'm torn. Are you aggressive? Not that aggressive, really. Um, nah, you know what? Let's train it out of him. Let's scold him. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. So, yes, he is very tired. Do I have a cup of fill up here? I do. Take a nap. And okay. Uh, Marisa is actually also pretty tired. Um, she's brushing her teeth. But let's fill the bowl and have some coffee then. Okay, we have a chance card. During the lunchtime game of soccer, Grayson ends up as the last defender while his boss is leading the attack with a dribble towards the goal. Grayson could slide tackle his boss to keep him from scoring, or stay on his feet and try a less dangerous challenge. What should Grayson do? <laughs> well, so <laughs> I guess he's playing soccer with Jennifer Pleasant then. Uh, seeing as they have their history. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I think that he would uh, stay on, on the feet, yeah. Definitely. Not sliding allows Grayson's boss to score easily and keeps the man in a good the, the woman in a good mood for the rest of the day. The lunchtime workout does Grayson some good and he gains some enthusiasm for sports. Okay, so that was actually the right choice. <laughs> That's good. She actually wants um, Hugo to get a scholarship, but it doesn't say what scholarship though, so it could be anything, it could be good grades, I guess. Uh, so, looks like she doesn't have that high ambitions for her son yet. He's still quite young after all. But yeah, Hugo is uh, napping up here. Right, uh, so I think that she would spend a bit of time with the dog. They might actually even go out on a walk, I think. It might be nice. Yes, I think that he's uh, had enough of a nap now. Um, although, like a typical teenager, he's uh, hungry again. <laughs> so let's uh, go downstairs and grab something from the fridge. I think that Hugo has uh, recovered some now. He's in a bit better state of mind than he was uh, before. Um, after his date, that went pretty well with Alba and after speaking with his mother as well. Um, I think he's still pretty annoyed with his father though <laughs> for not supporting him and for chewing him out. Um, but yeah, I think that he's uh, ready to try again really. Um, he definitely does want to have a job after all. Um, it's just that he he wants to do better. <laughs> so I think that once he'd had something more to eat, then he would uh, again try to find somewhere to work. So I'm going to have him find a job again. So Marissa is back and uh, is pretty exhausted actually. So I think that she would have a nap on the couch. For now and the doggo is feeling fine so that's good okay i think it might still be the same jobs um it hasn't switched over yet yeah it's still the same um so i'm actually going to leave it and then uh, he can look again uh, tomorrow instead think that's going to be better. Um, yeah, but I think that in general he wants to perform well in most things, so I think he'd actually do his homework as well. All right, so I think that she has recovered a little bit of her energy and uh, I would like her to call up Dina Caliente and um, yeah, have a chat with her. 
their relationship has gone down quite a lot already. Um, so I would like them to become friends again if possible. So just talk for a while. I think I'm actually going to take it down even further. I definitely think that Marissa would um, talk with someone even if her social bar would be filled up. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Especially someone as influential as Dina Lamgrad, so. Great, so he's done with his homework. So I guess he just um, used the bathroom and uh, go to sleep, actually. And I guess uh, seeing as both of their children just went on a date, <laughs> I think that they might be um, discussing that. Uh, <laughs> perfect timing for the woohoo sign to pop up. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think that they're just keeping track of their children and uh, I think that they're both pretty pleased uh, that both Hugo and Alba are getting along so well. But yeah, they're up to friends again and uh, I think that it's about time for uh, Marissa to go to bed actually, she's pretty exhausted. <laughs> so let's just go to bed. And Hugo has gone to sleep as well, that's perfect. Right, so they're going to sleep for a while and then Grayson is going to come home eventually. So let's see if I can send him to bed before he passes out or he, he's going on his own actually. <laughs> so let's hope he makes it. Yeah, looks like he will. Perfect. All right then. So that was it for the Bendette family as well. So a lot of stuff happened in this episode and uh, <laughs> I really look forward to seeing what else we can come up with for the political career actually and what other sims are going to be employed in the same one. Yeah, so thank you so much for watching this episode and uh, see you next time. Take care. Bye.